Hello? Yo, what's happening? Not much, man. How you doing? Not much. Pretty loud. Seems good. Yeah, it's picking you up pretty good. Say something. Like, yeah, yeah, check, check, check. Yeah, seems check good. Check one, two, keep it on. All right. <coughs> that works. All right. All right, we're on episode 15. This is your segment. Okay. And um, it's going to be the call version. It's going to be 20 glorious questions for you. 20 glorious questions? Yep. You had no to prepare for. <clears throat> oh. So unless you listen to the other previous three podcasts I've been on, you don't know what the questions are. And Gene has it believed that you definitely cheat and you probably have already listened to all the podcasts <laughs> you know the questions. <laughs> So, so Gene thinks uh, I'm cheating on this? That you already listened to the podcast and know the questions and are coming prepared. No, that, uh, that is not true. All right. Well, Gene, you can rest assured on that one. All right, let's get ready to start. And we'll do the pause. And then we'll do this. <coughs> yeah, all right. On three. One, two, three. Welcome to the Chainsaw Bar. I'm your host, Mike. Joined today with... Clayton. Yep. And Madeline. Awesome. This is uh, part four of uh, episode 15, and it is 20 questions time. <coughs> but let's get into first. What you been into lately, Clayton? We haven't talked to you in a couple weeks or so. Nah, uh, you know, same old, same old work, and man, staying away from COVID. Ah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> Same here. A, watch, yeah. Oh, yes, watching a little bit of horror, if that's what we're supposed to say. Mm. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say whatever's the truth. Whatever's the truth and whatever's off your, pop your head. Yes, yes. Definitely. Definitely watch um, some horror. For sure. Right. Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some good stuff. I mean, <clears throat> I, um, I've just been watching stuff on Shudder here and there. The um, the shed was a really good one. Yeah, you I don't know if you checked that out yet. No, I haven't had a chance. There's a lot been going on. There's a lot of horror we've got. <clears throat> well, it's it's like it, it takes place out. It starts out in the woods, and apparently, like there's this head vampire, and he bites this guy. He's like hunting, and he turns him into like as soon as he bites him, then the sun comes up and kills the head vampire. So he essentially inherits as the head vampire. No. <laughs> but but while he's running, like he's got to cover himself up, and he's trying to get out of the sun, and then he he stumbles onto a shed in the backyard of this family, this this uh, yeah farmhouse family, and then he he just goes into the shed, and he sit, and he gets stuck in there. Oh so, no! So he's kind it kind of takes place in the backyard basically. Oh, just about the whole movie is focused on the the vampire being in the shed and. They're trying to figure out how to deal with it throughout the whole movie. It kind of gives off a good 80s horror vibe to it, and it's pretty retro feel to it. You know we like that. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's it's really good. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty great. Okie dokie. You ready for your questions? <clears throat> I mean, there's 20 of them, so I guess we better, better start moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our segments have been getting aggressively longer with Gene, but everybody else's was pretty quick. We ran them pretty fast. So this segment is called 20 Questions, No Context, Just Answers. Okay. All right, here we go. Number one, Freddy or Jason, who wins? Jason, man, he done won. All right, good deal. Number two, Scooby-Doo Team or Supernatural Winchester Brothers? Who really saves the world, and, and it can be because they were the cause of it. Who really saves the world? <clears throat> uh, well, okay. Uh, quick, quick side note. 
I, w- I was watching a Supernatural episode the other day, and it was their crossover with Scooby Doo, and they became animated. And, and, oh, I missed that so, one. <laughs> yes, so it was kind of weird seeing that them come together. I would say both because I watched them work together in that, and they both kind of, you know, went through and did it. But if I if I had to choose by side, I'd say Scooby Doo. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because like we did not know the episode out. Is out. That must be one of the later episodes, last three seasons. We haven't seen it yet. It, it totally happened, and you should watch it because it's really weird, and I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> See, we started watching Supernatural like nine years into the show, so we haven't really caught up yet. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I never watch it ever. I catch it here and there, and then I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to be watching more of it, but I just catch an episode here and there, and that was one of them. Oh, that's awesome. We, we started at the one. beginning... And just decided we're gonna go one by one, and it's like, like if you start at the beginning of Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so it's, many it's seasons. It's like it's been so many years, and we're still not caught up. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll be there. We'll be there when we get there. That's what I always say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> next question. Number three: Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation. Was Leatherface going transvestite in that episode? Yes or no? Uh, I think, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think Leatherface was, I don't know, just playing the part of the, the person whose face he was wearing. Oh, that's you know, a very good you take, a, you, you, you take a face and you, and you're going to put it over your face. You want to kind of immerse yourself into that character. And I think that's all it was. I didn't think Leatherface was one way or the other, but if, if indeed he was, that's fine. Like he could be whatever he wants. He's Leatherface, but for that matter, I just think he was just doing an excellent job at role playing. That's All right. that's actually really insightful. Yeah. Nice. All right. Number four, Jaws or the Mayor? Who's the real villain? Now, uh, elaborate on the Mayor, like the Mayor of Jaws. Yeah, the Mayor in Jaws. <sighs> uh, I'd say the Mayor because you know the the animal is just you know, doing what's in its nature and the mayor is just like has a choice, more choice than an animal does. Okay. So I, I could say that it comes back to again, like the, the per, the people like we as humans are more of a monster than any animal or monster that we create to be the bad guy. Right. That's fair. Hey, that's good. All yeah. right. Yeah. We're all kind of on the 50, 50 on that one then. Cause it's like some of us are mayor, some of us are jaws. I think it was about yeah. 75%. But, but yeah. see, like, again, with Jaws, like, he's just acting out on instinct. Like, they has, he doesn't know better than to just eat. Right. And how and how is, you know, that's not fair to say he's the bad guy because you're in his home where he dwells. No, yeah, that's Right, fair. stand your ground, Jaws. Right. Respectable. All right, number <clears throat> five, Deliverance. Horror movie, yes or no? <sighs> It's one of those close calls where, you know, may not be horror for some people, but it's definitely horror for others. It just depends on where you, where you stand on, on horror with yourself. Like that could be horrific for some people, but for me and you, it'd be like, Oh my God, that's awful. But you know, not horror. Right. All right. So you, is it yes or horror movie or not? It, I, in my mind, I say no, I, I say it's like thriller, not really horror for me. Okay. Number six. Here's a good one. Slap bite. You know what slap bite is? Uh, no, I don't believe so. All right, slap bite is when the two people slap each other unconscious. Oh, I thought she was talking about if it was a movie. I was like, no, but yeah, I know what. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, I get that. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Doctor Evil versus Doctor Frankenverter. Who wins? <laughs> that's that's a good question. I, I want to say Frankenfurter. Ah, good. Yeah, everybody's been kind of on the fence on that one. It's a good one. I, 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 want, I don't want to say Dr. Evil because he never wins. <laughs> well, he went to prison. Even, Come even on, he, he wins, out. he doesn't win. So I just, I just gonna, I'm just going to lean the other way. All right, that seems fair. Let's see, number seven. Ah, the hard to pronounce one. Jason Moana, the Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. Every time. Jason Momoa. He, he just has to do uh, it. Anyway, that guy. What horror movie does he go into? 
What do you think he's going into? Uh, like, like, it, like uh, an already established horror movie, or like, like just what, like you know, that, the kind of horror movie you think he's gonna pop into if he does ever go into a pop? Probably movie. like, probably like the damn a movie where there's a lot of a lot of sex and people get slashed. Maybe like a slasher. He's he's gonna fall victim because like he's he's that got that you know. Pr- Good looking guy vibe, you know, he's gonna be one that dies. I don't see him as a hero. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, like, the uh, the, the well liked boyfriend in Scream. Yeah, he'll be like one of the early the early victims, you know, right at the start because yeah. he can't keep his pants on. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Or his shirt on, for that matter. Mm hmm. Okay, that's, that's a good answer. But he really wants him to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a shtick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, ladies, drool all you want, you know? Whatever. Yeah, you have the damn beefcake in that. Yep. Anyway, all right. Number eight. The Cramps or the Misfits? Boom. Misfits. Cool. You listen to the Cramps? I've never actually listened to the Cramps that much. Mm-hmm. I have listened to the Misfits more than that, but... Yeah, you should check him out. Gene's kind of the same way he doesn't listen. He doesn't really know who the cramps are. <clears throat> but I mean, I, like I said, you know, I, I'm sure I'd like it. <laughs> yeah, definitely YouTube it. It's great. Yeah. Okay, number nine, and this is a freaking hate song one. Number nine, best horror movie soundtrack song. Ooh, best horror. Oh, best horror movie soundtrack song. Like, well, does it, it have to exist already, or just am I choosing? I don't know, you can answer as you please. Be well, cool. see, uh, right off the top of my head, I was going to say Devil Driver, Swinging the Dead. And that, that was actually on the Freddy vs. Jason soundtrack. Oh, hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you check that out, that's a real headbanger, and it's just it just sounds like horror. All right, cool, good answer. Good, yeah. Solid answer. Everybody else flipped out and lost their biscuits. And I think Gene actually made one up. <laughs> I thought Gene well, there, was there's the also, uh, Yeah, I mean... There's a bunch of stuff, but that's one that popped out right away. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next question. Number 10. Katana, Samoan War Club, or Infinite Chainsaw? Meaning it's got enough gas and it's solar powered and it's shake weight based that it will always run. So, uh, what was the first one? Katana? Sam- Samoan War Club or Infinite Chainsaw? And this is going into a gunless apocalypse. Go. So you you go into an apocalypse. You want something that's infinite uh, and light. So I'd, I'd say either War Club or Katana. But you know, if I had to say, I'd say War Club would be a lot more fun, or be the most fun brutality wise. Uh, <laughs> just too heavy with the chainsaw, not worth it. Uh, Katana is just not my style. There you go. Good answer. Number eleven. <laughs> You're a vampire. Box God. wine. <laughs> Box wine. Grape juice. Grape colored Mad Dog 2020 or grape soda? <laughs> I'm a grape juice. <laughs> grape juice. Okay, grape juice. Nice. And this one was confusing because of the idealism, but here we go. Number 12 Evil Dead, Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead. Go. Evil Dead, 100%. Okay, there we go. Number 13. This one's fun. Unless you have some weird eye problems. <laughs> Argento or Fulci. They're going to kill you with no budget. So they've got infinite budget to kill you with and record it. Which okay. you, who do you choose to direct your death? In this oh, style. Uh, I want... I want... Uh, wow. I want Tom Savini or... Um, God, Greg Nicotero, either one. Mm, sadly, those are not two choices. It's Italian director, so you're going to have to go uh, Italian. Tom Savini, then. Uh, no, it's Argento or Fulci, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> they can do the special effects for <laughs> it, but those are, it. those are the two directors that have to choose your death. Look, they're directed, all right? Like, look, they're both directed. I just know that. Yeah, like, you true. can't count them out as not directing. <laughs> no, but he can count them out as not being one of the two directors. On this list. All right. Well, then I choose Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Mm, so horrible. Such a bad person. 
it's gotta be it's gotta uh, be Lucio Pulci or Dario Argento. In this oh, scenario. I thought she was like I thought she was saying that I could choose any director. No. No, no, no. That may be a question for the future. I missed under I, okay. Uh, and if that was the question, Tarantino is a horrifying choice. My bad, my bad. Yeah. I, I, we need to redo this question and erase this part and cut back and fill it. No, no I think this part's important. It's, that's a pretty good description of the situation. But, yes, Dario Gento or Lucio Filci, back from the dead, are going to direct your death. And they have an unlimited okay, okay. budget where they can, they can pay for government things to bring zombies up or... Giant, build giant guillotines 90 feet tall. They've got no budget. They can do whatever the hell they want. And they're going to kill you somewhere in their movie. Who do you right. want to do it? Argento? Gento, okay. Yeah, because that with Leah, she has a big eyeball thing. She's got an eyeball yeah. fear. Can't watch yeah. movies with eyeball damage. And yeah. both these directors are pretty synonymous with eyeball or Eye gouging. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll take it. So that's how I have to go. <laughs> that's how I have to go. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about like he'd probably just run me over with a car, and then it'd play back somewhere later, and just be sad and be like, "Do you think he'd get some big epic thing? And he just runs you over with a little car?" Like, <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. Cool. As, long as, as long as you see the darkness in my eyes before they die. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, number fourteen. This is a good one. Who is the who is the best modern horror icon post the nineteen eighties? Post nineteen eighties. Yes. Horror icon. So excluding the eighties, an icon. I want to say. I want to say like, you know, really. (sighs) Is it fair to say like Bill Mosley because he kind of became more of an icon after the eighties? Yeah. All his uh, later stuff. Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, Mike totally pulled that shit too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because I went with Robert England post the 80s because he's just done a plethora of good horror and weird parts since the damn I mean 80s. yeah but his his horror like kind of dripped off after after Nightmare on Elm Street I mean he did some good stuff but it was like lesser known after that he was kind of under the under the radar after Nightmare yeah but does being lesser known necessarily equate with being less iconic that's fair that doesn't yeah I can agree with that yeah because like if you can get like you you got like a budget, and then you somehow yeah. have the option to get Robert England in for a little cameo bit, you're gonna do it. Yeah, it's like yeah. And I, you could also make the case for Tony Todd because he was doing Final Destination and oh yeah, I will always you know. make a case for Tony Todd. <laughs> yeah, he did a uh, Hellfest. Yep. Yeah, he's kind of been on a kind of been on an uprise here lately. You know, he's mm-hmm. been getting a lot of recognition for things. Yeah, Tony Todd would be a he's right there too. He's rolling regular. He's doing some good stuff lately. He's doing yeah. a lot of documentary work, so he's talking in documentaries, and that's awesome. Oh, yeah. All I mean, right. So cool. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, number 15. Bloody Mary, Zombie, Shark Bite, or Moscow Mule. Go. Oh, my gosh. Zombie, Shark Bite. <laughs> What's not to love about a Zombie, Shark Bite? All right, we're going to... Go with that one. That's a good combination. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because all those were drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but zombie shark well, see, bite sounds great. Well, see, like, I didn't know it was separate. I thought it was because it was all in the line there. And I was like, well, I'm going to go with a zombie shark bite. There you go. I like that. Very fulci. Very fulci. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's some shark underwater. Shark up. Yep. Very that's good. pretty great. <laughs> all right. Number 16. Nor- oh, damn it. Nosferatu or... Brom Stoker's 1990s Dracula. Go. I mean, creepy wise, Nosferatu is like a lot more creepier for me than Dracula was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll take I'll take that I'll take that creepy little old man, you know, <laughs> creeping around corners, and it's just something a little bit more scary to that than you know just straight up Dracula. And I mean, I don't know, they're both good, but I just. I just have my things that cringe me more than others. Yeah. Okay, and Gary Oldman's just not one of them. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. Do you believe demons have a bunch of rules to follow? Or is the salt ring bullshit? I believe that 
there's loopholes to everything. <laughs> uh, demons <laughs> probably have rules. They definitely try to find a ways around them. But I, I, I'm assuming they have rules. But they find ways to break them in every every scenario. Okay. Yeah, that, that seems fair. Yeah, because we were watching a Satanic Panic this past weekend. And yeah. one of the little things was the classic salt like wall set close off doors and right. the, the description was like yeah demons can't cross salt without having to sit there and count every single grain of salt and and that's like the same thing like you know vampires can have rules like you know then fright night where he couldn't come in the house unless you invited him in yeah yeah mm-hmm. or that episode of the x-files where i had to pick up all the sunflower seeds yeah i've heard this about vampires and i've heard this yeah. about spirits but i've never heard of, i've never heard that being attributed to demons that salt will protect you or yeah. keep them at bay or, or busy. Or keep them. Well, I, yeah. I just heard that salt, like it supposedly keeps everything bad out as long as there's a circle. <laughs> yeah, that's generally what I've heard. Hmm. Seems fair. Because uh, salt, yep, it's pretty toxic. <laughs> pretty cleansing. It melts slugs. What do you want? Yeah. That's fair. Demon slugs. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that's a new. That's a new concept for a movie there. Yeah, it is. Ew. Demon slugs. That's... Copyright 2020. Yep, there it's you like go. They, they possess the living, they start getting slug like features, and then the only way to stop them is you pour salt on them. And instead of melting them like it really does, slugs, yeah, they have and to sit there and good, count. Like horror effects there. Man, this is budget mm. already. <laughs> you, could, you could do the classic Star Trek where you, they, dri- they drip into your ear. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. It could be like um, yeah, an infest, an infection kind of movie. Uh, yeah. Very, and I see this being like very Night of the Creeps. Yeah, but what oh, was yeah. the other one with um? Nick Combined with some like Cronenberg body horror. Yes, yeah. definitely. That's gotta happen there. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> um, wait, what was the one with Nathan Fillion? Oh gosh, I can't remember. Not Night of the Creeps, but. No. But it looked the the, the big slugs. No, I don't remember. No, nope. no. Nope, nope. Gone. Gone. Number 19. <laughs> Friday the 13th or Saturday the 14th? Which is more horrible? Uh, uh, probably Saturday the 14th because I don't know what the hell it represents right now. <laughs> yeah. it's, just to make, it's just a reminder that Friday the 13th is over. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Lee had a good description where it's like, yeah, you're just all hung over on the 14th. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Ugh. I don't know, you're probably dead if you went through a Friday the 13th. Maybe. We're going to keep it horror here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we are a bar, though, so yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Alright, we're up to number 20, and it's it's a trick. It's a trickster. But, Halloween or Christmas, go. <laughs> Halloween. Just, uh, do I have to say why? No context, but if you want to, because that was the last question, and we're running pretty Halloween good on time. Because, the Halloween because it's the only fucking holiday we're celebrating, and that's bottom line. Awesome. Good deal. All right, let's yeah. see. Uh, by the way, everybody, surprise, surprise, chose Halloween. <laughs> yeah. that's, that should be no contest. It really is like, you know. It was it was a test. It was a definite test. It's like, yeah, sure. You got a Christmas fucker in here? I, God damn it. I'd expect Gene to choose Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of see that. yeah definitely could see that all right let's see uh all right that's the 20 questions thanks for playing what are you gonna watch this week is there anything popping on your schedule your radar you need to check out this week J- well, uh, not th- not this week currently um i did just finish watching uh the haunting of uh hill house how was that was that the modern one yeah, the new the new modern one that just came out like a couple years ago on Netflix. Yeah, I've seen it. I haven't like got to watch it yet. Yeah, I mean it, it's a it's a messed up kind of sad ghost story, and it's it hits it hits a lot of uh, appeals. Yeah, it's a good it's a good horror in there. Uh, it's it's like a it's like one of those ones where you gotta pay attention to everything in order to understand what's going on. But it's a there's a lot of tragedy in it, and it's it's a good it's a good ghost story. Yeah, that's the thing about ghost stories is that they typically have like such a, a kind of heart wrenching aspect. Yeah, like and and this one has a lot of spins and twists. Like so, when you see stuff in this one, like in one episode, 
it doesn't make sense. But as you keep watching, like everything starts unraveling, and it's like, oh my gosh, like this, this is ha- that happened, and that's why that was that, and you wouldn't expect it to be this way. Like there's so many like doors. There's not a narrow path that you go down. Like everything is coming from all directions, like at once, and you just it just pulls it all together perfectly right at the end. So like some M Night Shyamalan shit. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in some ways. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a good one. Kind of a Tarantino, Tarantino kind of movie spiel where everything just ties up a nice at the end there. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. And, and nothing's left, yeah, nothing's ever left uh, un, unsolved or, you know, left out there for you to head scratch. All right, that sounds fun. Is it a series? Is it a TV series or like? Yeah, it's a series. It's like uh, ten episodes, I think. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we ten got. Ten or eleven. Oh, that's something to watch. I don't know if they're doing any more seasons, but it's just I think it's just one season. Nice. Okay. Yeah, because like there's so many good series out there right now. Just trying to keep up is it's a, it's a bit time consuming. Yeah. And that's there, great. There's, there's definitely time. some yeah. some stuff out there. The stuff is out there. It's true. <laughs> The stuff. Right. The stuff. All right, this is our first chance to talk to you since we did that thing. So we're going to do a cheap movie review. And tonight's movie review, we review Tigers on Afraid. Oh, yeah. Since, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, you're the one who recommended it to us since we're talking about uh, ghost stories. Yeah, I'm glad you all finally got with the times and watched such a great movie. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad, too. Thanks for that, like... Freaking nail in my heart. Yeah, that. Was, oh, dude, I, uh, I tell you, like I, I, I teared up, man. Uh, I thought the movie's harsh. Uh, it was unbelievable. It was like, wow, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the most heart wrenching movies I've ever seen in horror, and, and I've seen a lot of horror movies. Yeah. Like you're not supposed to feel like you went through a real life tragedy whenever you come out of a movie like that. You know, it doesn't ever supposed to hit that close. Yeah, it definitely, there's so many little bits and pieces in that entire thing that's just kind of like, oh, God, I need to go get a drink real quick. That's fucking gut-wrenching. It's like, really? Yeah, and yeah. It's like, it's, oh. uh, for those of you out there that are wondering, like, it's it's just a great, what, what, what it's a foreign film? Like, what's the foreign I think it's, uh, uh, ethnicity? Mexico. I think it's a Mexican state, country state. So yeah, it uh, it's, just, it's just about a, you know, a group of kids that, inherit three wishes and wishes aren't always as happy as you think they would be when you make them so that's basically just what this movie's about is just the consequences that come with good things yeah and you know the ghost story part to it and, and the, yeah the, the, the there's, there's two part. sides yeah there's definitely like a you know a real real life thing and a, and a paranormal thing yeah, yeah, definitely the the um, two two different horrors. Like you know, you're going through real life horror and you're going through paranormal horror all at once. All at once, yeah. And that real like uh, you know, I think Guillermo del Toro did that really well in in Pan's Labyrinth, where it's like there's the real actual violence, and it's all you know historically accurate. You know, this is yeah. really what's going on in people's lives, and then yeah. add the paranormal to that. Mm-hmm. To tell that story, I thought it was just incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. And like these kids are, are running from the uh, cartel, like you know, and they're basically homeless, fighting in the streets, trying to figure out how they're going to survive the cartel, let alone running from a paranormal entity that also tries to get them to. So yes, it's, it's got a lot of uh, layers. Yeah, a was... lot of heart. Yeah. Uh, you, have, uh, you should have tissues ready if you watch this film, but I definitely, like, 10 out of 10 would recommend this film because it, it is definitely a top-notch horror film. I agree. Very much so. Yeah, that was, whew, that one was a very, just, all the scenery, all the, like, the sets and the locations were just so spot-on, so grimy and just accurate. Yep. And, and like I was telling you guys, you know, it's like, if you, you know, it's where y'all have kids, man, it's going to hit you a little bit harsh. <laughs> it always does. Yeah, it did. Man, that was awful. Oof. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that was a quick one. I think that's about all the major things we got. We did a cheap movie review, and it was awesome. Yeah, you want anything, you want to share anything about this week, or any 
last little bits of insight? Uh, uh, um, oh, yeah, I watched the, uh, the Color Out of Space, too, with Nick Cage in it. How was that? Keep it was things. trippy. It's it's very trippy. Like it plays on visuals and you know, there's a lot of. I mean, there's some weirdness in it. There's there's like some body horror in there too. Is it Event Horizon level? It's yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like I mean, there's horror. Like there's there's some trippy stuff. Like it's like a meteorite hits their hits their yard. And then it, it basically it's like it infects the environment, like everything starts spreading from that meteorite, and it kind of turns it into its own little world around their around their rent or their farmland or their house around there. Right. So this is like based on H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, and so yeah, and it's just in the Lovecraftian it just, tradition. Yeah, it just keeps taking like every day, like it gets worse, mm-hmm. and then. Um, you know, stuff starts getting in there. If they touch it, it starts infecting the family, and things start getting weird. And you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. And and there's there's a, there's a cool thing in there. There's a cool cameo in there that you wouldn't expect, but it happens. And when you see the cameo of this person, you're like, that's that's badass. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Yeah, it's not like uh, the the creep show where he's covering meteor shit. So maybe it's yeah. not Stephen King. Well, they kind of are covered in meteor <laughs> shit, but it, the meteor shit is like shape. It, it's the color of like cotton candy and weird, <laughs> bright colors. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's exactly how it should be, like unicorn poop. Yeah, unicorn poop. Yeah, it just looks like a unicorn <laughs> shit all over their their <laughs> land and all the creatures around it. That's funny. Oh no, that's good. Yeah, they cause... start. It, but like they had, there's a cool scene where like they have. They have alpacas, and apparently, like the alpacas were all fused together and mutated and everything. Oh, oh that's fun. That sounds real fun. Ah. It's really great, and Nick Cage going going crazy bit by bit, losing his mind, kind of like Jack Torrance style. It's wow. kind of fun to watch. Mm. Yeah, it's not like Mandy where he just kind of got thrown into it, just everything going crazy at once. Yeah, no, it's just like kind of a slow drifting to madness and. You know, there's there's some there's some cool effects in there, and it's a good it's it's a good movie. It's a strange movie, but it's a good movie. Yeah, a yeah. lot of gore. Oh, that's definitely what we need. A lot of blood yeah. splatter. So spooky season is upon us. You looking forward to anything this Halloween era season? We're gonna be trying to do a lot more podcasts, probably every week. Uh, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to trying to watch some more movies. Uh, I mean, I definitely will be, but. Uh, I want to try to. I want to say I want to try to go to some haunted houses if it, if COVID permits it. But I mean, I'm kind of skeptical. But if they're outside, I won't be as skeptical. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think many people are doing them this year. Yeah, I think most yeah. of them have been shut down. There's sadly. there's some going on, but I'm just it's just like a matter of me doing it. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got a Halloween yeah, it's costume. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to enjoy one of the best months of the year like actually favorite month of the year with all this still going on yeah it's really depressing yeah like i so, i won't be able to say you know our our youngest kid is, is 13 he's not past trick-or-treat age no. you know mm-hmm. and i just i'm not gonna go door to door it never <laughs> made germs so buy him a big bag of candy yep yep well, uh, what's great, what's crazy is, you know, COVID made it Halloween all year. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we went out playing uh, disc golf today, and he was wearing that, you know, steampunk velvet trench coat the whole time, and a, and a plague doctor mask, so. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's been a crazy year, but hopefully, uh, I just, well, you know, if anything, I just look forward to watching a lot of you know good movies and and stuff like that. Just trying to just trying to make stuff seem like it's Halloween esque as much as it can be. This temperature drop that we've had the past two days really helped. Oh man, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely feels like falling out. Yeah, this has been awesome. Today was nice, and we were out in the sun, and it was like, oh, this is still comfortable. Yeah. I I do want to try to uh, do some pumpkin sculpting. I want to try to do that. That's a fun little hobby. You should definitely try that. 
Yeah, because I was watching people do that, and some of that stuff just looked really cool. And I, I was looking at, it, I was like, damn. I was like, it's one thing to carve a jack o' lantern; it's another thing to sculpt a pumpkin and make it look like just something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's an art form right there, a very fleeting yep. one. Definitely, and maybe see what see what happens with that. How about y'all? What are y'all planning to do? About the same. Uh, really, I don't know. I don't even have a costume picked out. Yeah, I'm not even like costume thought right now. But <laughs> definitely gonna carve a pumpkin this year. Gonna make some pumpkin pie. I've been wanting to make a pumpkin pie for a long time. So I'm actually yeah. probably gonna cook a pumpkin pie and make it. Not just go out and buy one. And see if we can make one that tastes good. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the pumpkins that we grew in the garden kind of sat out there too long and I didn't notice. And, and kind of got rotten on the bottom before I picked them. So, yeah. so those have been given to the wasps. <laughs> and they've enjoyed them. Yes, yeah. they were beautiful pumpkins. I'm not gonna lie. Sounds I'm great. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Not to mention, yeah. Try everything pumpkin spiced this year. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it is a brew of protection, really. I, I did try some pumpkin spiced waffles the other morning, and they were pretty damn good. I mean, who doesn't like pumpkin spice? I don't know why it gets so much hate. I, I guess it's the, you know, you know, quote, basic white girl, in quote, thing. Haters gonna hate. With the lattes. I don't really <laughs> drink, like, the lattes, but, like, pumpkin spice? It's like cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg and mace? Who doesn't like that? <laughs> like, what, what the hell? That's delicious. I mean, they just, they just don't understand how close it is. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And they and they don't understand just because they're uh, uneducated to the fact that it's almost the same thing, and then they just want to hate because it's different slightly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not coming in a pink or purple like mixed color. It's just in brown. Yeah, we're, we're, we're living in the era where people just argue for the sake of it. Right. Like I don't care if you put pineapple on your pizza. Yeah, that doesn't why is that off. skin off my ass and, and then yeah and then it's like why should you care if I do it because exactly. I mean what's your deal let me be me yeah exactly that's uh, what's people... your deal JK Rowling what's your deal <laughs> <laughs> it's not hurting you so what's your deal Trump America exactly yeah that's it Ugh, we're in the middle of that mind your business yeah that's true no, man, that's what nobody is doing at all this year <laughs> this is true it's like we've met so much more ugh like it's like it. these assholes wake up every day it's like who can we fuck with today you know yeah can't play the victim yeah and the then victim. it's like oh well I'm not trying to get under your skin I'm just supporting out facts <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's been a freaking year of them eye opening for a lot of people and a year of just yeah. putting your head in the sand for a lot more Oh and then, yeah, and, and then eye rolling why, for the rest of us. That's mm-hmm. why we watch these awesome horror movies and just think of those people whenever a head gets popped or somebody gets <laughs> disemboweled. You know, yeah, it's an escape. It's an escape. Yeah, it is. It is definitely an escape. So we don't have to do these things for real. Exactly. Yeah. And some of it's like a definite damn history lesson. It's like ah, that's why that asshole's doing that right now. Let's not let him do that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, well, you can yeah. learn some lessons from a good horror movie. Yeah, there's a but little I, catharsis. A horror there. movie could also teach you how to deal with these villains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Practical. <laughs> so it's it's pretty it's a pretty diverse damn genre that we've been dedicated to here. And we're yeah. ne- we're nearing a year in now. Oh yeah. So oh. go into the the cast. Yeah, into the cast. Like we started uh, the twenty. 20- yeah. Like, after I couldn't get the Delano episode because of just Delano just being Delano. Like, yep. uh, the first cast that I re- released on Anchor was on the 29th of last year. Yep. Oh, wow. That's... So we're about about ready to move into season two, I suppose. So yeah, that's, kind of a, fun. that's a milestone. Yeah. Yeah, and interesting, interesting milestones. I was talking to Gene this morning. We're discussing the cast, and I was talking about, like, the dynamics of it, and, like, I made we've made thirty eight cents so far on a like our commercial, so that's awesome. It will be rich in like thirty eight hundred years. Exactly, that's what I keep thinking. But um, I'm going to do some shout outs here to our listeners. Uh, there aren't many, but they are very diverse. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to shout out to our northern or northern folks out in Ireland. 
We had a listener really? pop in from Linster. I think counties how they how they do it out there. I have never yeah. heard of that county. Yeah, Linster was in Ireland. So that we had a listener listen there. We had a Did listener nice. we had a listener out there and we thank you in Tokyo. They don't name them, but they show the demographics of where they were. Yeah. And then we had a our Canadian connection is the uh, British Columbia area. So British Columbia people, we've had a couple of those cats listen. Thank you. Nice. And Thank the, you. And the weird one was a, like the one I didn't see coming was a New South Wales in Australia. That's uh, one of the latest ones. We had somebody pop in and find our cast and listen to that from New South Wales. And that's pretty awesome. That nice. one caught Gene off because he's like, that's where my people are from. Oh, gosh. Of course. <laughs> I was like... No kidding, Gene. He's like, yep. Yeah. Like, wow. like, and like, and Ireland. Wah, <laughs> like, wah, that's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was a funny little thing we talked about this morning about the demographics and the viewership and how. And, and to, to any of you that take the time to just listen to this, that's insane because <laughs> I didn't think anybody would ever listen. But I mean, I, we're just here mouthing off whatever we're just enjoying each other's company and if you just partake in that that's cool exactly you must be real bored <laughs> or you must <laughs> are just having to take that bull and say it's a horror podcast i've got to listen to it <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean but i mean yeah also if you just enjoy it like enjoy our banter and like you know comedic antics uh we're pretty damn that, charming we've got some skills here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we might sound a little dull sometimes, but we do enjoy what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because, like, right now, the most, the two most popular episodes are, like, when you came back, we named it uh, Clayton's Back, and I think that got, like, 13 or 14 listens. And yeah. then uh, the first Gene Madness episode, which I think is up to 17 listens. I, I listened to the first Gene Madness, and I was like, where is that going? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know where I'm at right now. And then the second one appeared, and I was like, you should have been I think here. I'll miss the second half. <laughs> you <laughs> should, oh, it got, it got worse. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I might check it out here, to the here soon, but it, it was just, I was just like, Gene, what are you talking about? Exactly. <laughs> talking about Mike Tyson. <laughs> yep. You turn it over Mike Tyson. It got weird. It, it was it was definitely or not weird. It just went way far like out there. That's like, is this horror anymore? No. It, no. It's a horror movie that you're now hearing. In and of itself, yes. But yeah, sure. <laughs> Gene trying to pull us all into the aether. It was exactly that. It started feeling really strange at the end. It's like the room started shaking and wobbling and <laughs> turning purple. It was weird. It was really weird. He, he kept changing his favorite movie or the scariest movie. <laughs> yeah. And he kept trying to remember the name of Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. 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 And it was a different name every time. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that was a fun episode. And then <laughs> from, in two episodes, it goes from the scariest movie being House of a Thousand Corpses to The Devil's Rejects. Exactly. Which isn't a big jump. Yeah, not very. <laughs> They're two completely different movies. And neither of them are really that scary. They're great horror they're, they're movies, not. but they're not they're, they're scary. Really, I could see the Thousand Corp house being a lot scarier than Devil's Rejects. So, oh, but, yeah, by a long shot. But still. But not, not, not on the horror scale of being just terrifying, no. No. Good stuff, but damn. That boy does have a hard on for the damn zombie. <laughs> and, and cannibals. And, and Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson. Yeah. And Mike Tyson. Yeah. So that's surprising. That, that was, I, yeah, I know, I, I'm digging Mike Tyson too much too, so there we are. <laughs> I, I, I'll have to go check out what the the other the others answered the 20 questions myself. No, oh, they're pretty solid. They're pretty upset about a lot of things. But yeah, there's three segments and they're both, they're all great. I was upset yeah. about the, the music question because you just threw me under the bus there and since then I've thought about it so much and written down so many other things I'm going to have a whole like fucking music dedicated uh, episode of this podcast I see that's why we told you it's like you, you gotta keep it simple you gotta just say your answer and not get pissed off <laughs> just <laughs> just run through it I don't have a way to do that that's not my personality <laughs> yeah she was she was pretty I livid. think that's what makes you the, the Regina <laughs> 
<laughs> we got we got two people that go off the deep end with an explanation and get pissed <laughs> off about things, simple things, little things, but it's cool. That's what <laughs> makes the show. <laughs> yep. Oh god, yeah. So crazy. Ugh. That's what I was gonna say. I forgot. Anything else? I'm drawing a blank. I was going to say something about something, and it's just the... Oh, the descriptions I've been giving. Because, like, the 20 questions things. Like, the first one, I threw Maddie under a bus. The second one, I threw... I left uh, Leah tied to a train track. And uh, the third one, I we uh, tied Gene to a damn stump and leave him exposed for the woods to take. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give you a description like that in the description of the podcast, but uh, it's getting thrown <laughs> under a bus kind of question. Description. <laughs> On an anthill, covered in honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I was ripped apart by zombie zombie sharks. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got to be in that thrown under the bus kind of feel. So there, there's something there. I've got some or, ideas. Or I was, I was, I was uh, cement roped into the bottom of the, of a, the sea with zombie sharks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had a cement sharks. block tied to my legs all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Could be. It'll probably be just something really even more dumb than that. But we'll, I'll figure it out. We'll get you for a pair of lunch shoes, honey. We'll get you thrown on. We'll throw you under the bus somehow. It was, like, it, was, <laughs> it was left in a club at Jersey Shore for Red, Jersey Shore Dracula. Oh, man. Was, oh, no. Oh, no. That's really bad. That's a, way, that's a horrible way to go out. Yeah, exactly. It it's got to be that way. We, we strapped him to the pentagram on the to floor. A <laughs> strapped to the grenade, and Snooky was there to take him away. Yeah, she God. crawls out from it the TV like a, screen. A cage yeah. dancer in the club from Blade. <laughs> in yeah, you're fitted for a pair of leather, assless chaps. Oh God, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, that's about all we got. That's all we got for this week. Uh, we'll be working on ideas for next week. Jeans hey, on. Keep the, keep the questions going. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll th- I'll do maybe five questions for next week under the bus. Yeah, style. That's, that, that should just be a, a weekly segment. Yep. Five. Under the bus. Under the bus. But, one, but once a month, there's 20. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Coming up with questions was kind of tricky. It took me a good 25 minutes, and I was trying to be sneaky about it, writing them down, and Maddie kept walking by and like covering with a napkin. <laughs> she wouldn't know what I was doing. I, I was not even looking at what was under your napkin. Yeah, but I was sitting there scribbling for an hour. Just... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's funny. Just... You know, speaking of under the bus, we should we should do a segment about, uh, you know, ways people have been murdered by vehicles, best scenes in movies. No, yeah, the best, the best vehicle murder scene in uh, any horror movie you've seen. No, there's so many good ones, too. Exactly. That's why it'd be kind of a good one. I'm going with the Tremor Watermelon Head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great special effect. But I don't oh. know if that's, like... That's, that's pretty genre-defining, but... Yeah, I think I think there's a good... Like, you know, when get, the guy gets mowed down by the Green Goblin mm. truck. Yeah. Any of that. Yeah, and... Um, but I think even better in, in Maximum Overdrive would be... The, uh, the kids on the baseball field. Oh, God, get run over by a steamroller. <laughs> steamroller. <laughs> that that oh. is epic. Yeah, that really that, that, that's a lot better. That movie doesn't doesn't get the credit it deserves. The yeah. movie's so good. Like, it's, it's one of the best it's things so I've fun. seen. It's so fun. It's so fun. There's so much just machine killing, transformer murder. <laughs> yeah, so murder. many great creative ways. <laughs> machine kill somebody. Yep. Right? Uh, yeah, that was good stuff. We'll definitely throw that one on there. Like that's definitely gonna yeah. be a segment we'll have to cover in the future. Yeah, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of vehicular assault in Stephen King stories. I wonder what the so, backstory is with that. Next 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 segment's going or next topic's going. It's yeah. live. It, there you go. So mm-hmm. we're brainstorming here. This is how yeah. things happen. This is how yeah. horror podcasts Our listeners run. can prepare. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can prepare themselves emotionally the way I couldn't for that music question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, haters gonna hate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All so, right. I, I think that will wrap it up. Yeah, we're gonna watch right. some horror movies this week, and um, I guess that's it. I just want to say cool. thanks to our listeners around the world, yep, which is pretty you. amazing. And around the country. And around the country, definitely in the United States here. 
Um, please, please, uh, you know, don't hesitate to listen to any new garbage we might vomit up. <laughs> <laughs> totally. We'll redeem ourselves. <laughs> yep, yep. We're trying to be your B-movie horror podcast. Right? Mm. We know there's better podcasts out there, but we're the, we're the like, you know, non-full of ourselves kind of podcast that exactly. you want. Yes, this is quality content. Yeah, if this is getting edited into the, the next commercial, that makes us not two cents. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anchor. Yeah, <laughs> not a sponsor. <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. All right. You know what time it is, people. We thank for listening. On three. One. Two. Three. Vroom. All right. Thanks for listening. See you guys.